Now, when Jesus said, This is my body, keep in mind he made that statement strictly of the Passover bread. He didn't say it of those little wafers that some churches use, a regular bread that's been toasted and cut up into small squares, as I've seen elsewhere. He made the statement specifically of the Jewish Passover bread. And by law, three things had to be true of this bread for it to qualify for Passover. If any of these three things were missing, you could not use it for Passover. First of all, it had to be unleavened. That's why it's flat, notice. It has to be unleavened. Eleven throughout the Bible is a symbol of sin. And when Jesus, and um, there's also pictures of his body, and his body was unleavened, meaning it was sinless. How do you commit even one minor sin? Would have been disqualified from being the Passover sacrifice. As it turns out, he was the only Jew ever lived that kept the Mosaic law perfectly in the 613 commandments applicable to him. So he had an unleavened body. Secondly, notice it has to be striped. If these stripes were missing, it could not be eaten at the Passover. It has to be striped. And the body Jesus was also striped by way of the Roman whip at the time of the scourging. As Zechariah even prophesied, not Zechariah, but Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 53, with the stripes we are healed. Now the third element is it has to be pierced. So light will penetrate through the unleavened bread. If these holes were missing, it could not be eaten at the Jewish Passover. It has to be pierced. His body was also pierced twice. First of all, by the nails of the crucifixion, and secondly, by the spear in the side. As Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, Zechariah 12, 10 prophesies, Some days will look unto him, they shall look unto him whom they have pierced. So by being pierced and striped in 11, it becomes a new picture of the body of the Messiah. Now keep in mind this specifically with this bread that um, he identifies his body. In this ceremony, tossed up the uh, early part of the Passover, what's taken out of this uh, three compartment bag is the middle loaf. It's broken in two. Then half of it is wrapped up in linen cloth, and it must be linen cloth. Then hidden away somewhere, and there it stays for a long time. And then you finish the first ceremony, then you have the main meal. And then following the main meal, you have the second ceremony. It begins by removing the unleavened bread. And then breaking up in smaller pieces, passing around to everybody around the table. Everybody eats a piece of this bread. Now, this is, now what's interesting in Judaism is this. In all of the rituals that uh, Judaism uh, practices, biblical ones and rabbinic ones, they always have reasons for each ritual they perform. We do this because of that, we do that because of this. And in fact, for all the other rituals of the Passover, there's quite a few. For every ritual they have, there is an explanation as to why we do this. In remembrance of that. But on this one, strangely enough, they have no explanation. The most the rabbis have come out with so far is the three loaves represent um, the Kohens, which was the priesthood, the Levites, and the house of Israel. What they don't explain is why the middle one is taken out, why it's broken, why it's wrapped in cloth, why it's hidden away, and why it's brought out again. When Jude becomes a believer in the messiahship of Jesus, he finally recognizes uh, what this signifies and why Jesus uh, you said, this is my body given for you. One bag with three compartments, we believe there is only one God, we exist in three different persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The middle one is taken out of the bag, which represents the incarnation when God became man in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. The breaking of the middle loaf is a picture of his death when he came to this part of the ceremony. That's when he said, this is my body broken for you. It's then wrapped up in linen cloth. And the body of Jesus when he came down from the cross was also wrapped up in linen cloth. The hiding away is a picture of the burial. Then after supper, it is brought out unwrapped by a picture of the resurrection. Now, the, the, during the Passover service, you drink four cups of wine. Every cup has its own name. The first two cups are drunk before dinner. 
then immediately in, after dinner, in connection with the with the unwrapping of this, you have the third cup, and the third cup is called in Judaism the cup of the redemption, the cup of the redemption, and in Judaism it symbolizes the physical redemption of the firstborn from the ten plague, and. Um, in the case of Jesus, it's the third cup because he arose on the third day. But as a spiritual redemption involved, not a physical one, then pieces are given over to each one around the family. And he taught in John 6, we must uh, eat his flesh and drink his blood to have eternal life. And he interprets that to mean to believe that he is that messianic king.